Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. What I want viewers to do is to just replay the last 10 seconds of what I've said. I'm serious when I say the opinion you should follow should be your own. Now I'm in a odd position today. Very odd. I made a video just maybe two days ago with my first impressions on the Sergei Kovalev versus Bernard Hopkins fight. In fact, I believe I call the video something like First Thought, Hopkins versus Kovalev or something like that. And the video got a lot of views, a lot of hits. Now in the video I pointed out that I hadn't yet done film study. I hadn't looked at the fights. I was just giving my first impression. You know, my thoughts have changed, right? I've been online here for a while. I'm just here to say that after looking at films of the potential matchup between Hopkins and Kovalev, my thoughts on the fight have changed considerably. I believe Bernard Hopkins has a real chance in this fight. You know, right now, and the fight's months away. It's August the 5th. Right now, my thoughts are the way to play the fight would be to take the over, and I hate over-unders, but it would be to take the over, and it would also be to take Hopkins, right, on a hatch, right? I think Hopkins has a chance to win this fight big, and I also think that this fight's going to go a few rounds. Now let's talk about Kovalev. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to name a specific video here online from a specific YouTube user that I want you to look at because the seconds will sync with what I'm talking about. Right? And because I believe the blueprint on how to beat Kovalev is in literally the first minute of this fight, right, we'll be able to do so together. In other words, we'll be able to break down the film. If you're watching the film, you'll be able to see exactly what I see. Now, let me say this, right? Kovalev has a great straight, and it's straight, right hand. You saw that in his last fight against Blake Caparello, right? He has a great straight right hand. But other than that straight right hand, he's what I call a mid-range hooker. In other words, his big punches are hooks. He's two-handed. He has great balance. He maintains the balance during his fights, but he could also throw a great straight right hand, right? That straight right hand is the punch in his arsenal, other than leaping hooks, that allows him to hurt you from distance, right? So he's fighting out of an orthodox stance, he can hurt you from distance with his backhand, his straight right hand, right? And he could also leap in with hooks. That's his game, right? He has power in both hands. He's not a free swinger. He's extremely accurate. But that creates a possibility for someone who knows how to fight mid-range hookers. If you know that your opponent can only hurt you with a straight punch from that opponent's right side, 
then you can set up on his left side. Right? We're talking relative to Kovalev. You can set up on his left side and know that Kovalev, who doesn't turn that well, right, can only hurt you from distance with possibly a leaping left hook. Right? As long as you're away from his straight right hand, he can't surprise you from distance. Right? Bernard Hopkins has already fought this fight. Right? Bernard Hopkins has already fought a guy where after a few rounds of feeling the guy out, I don't believe Hopkins knew fully what his game plan was going to be until the third or fourth round. But after a few rounds of feeling a guy out, Hopkins understood that he could smother the guy's left hook. Right? Let's say I'm a two-handed mid-range hooker. You're my opponent. You're going to pick a side. Right? You're a fool if you stand right in front of me. I'm going to chop you down with both hands. You're going to pick a side. If you know I also have a straight right hand, you're going to come over here on the left. And you're going to realize two things. Because I'm a mid-range hooker, right, you can split the uprights with a straight left. Right? I'm like this, right? But I'm really throwing hooks apart from a straight right hand. You can split the uprights with a straight left. Right? Just kind of like add it up. You're across from me. You're left. It's straight. Right? Because I'm, I'm not George Foreman or Archie Mooring it. I'm not doing this. I'm a hooker. Right? So my hands are like this. I'm also a knockout puncher. So I'm thinking offense, not defense. You can split the uprights with a straight left. And also, if you smother me on this side and can smother my left hook, you've taken away my power. Right? So Hopkins has two safe zones against Kovalev. He can be too far away on Kovalev's left side because Kovalev doesn't have a good left jab. In other words, the punch that Jermaine Taylor used to beat Hopkins twice, Kovalev does not have. Right? Also, think about it. The straight left that southpaw Joe Calzaghe had that he used to beat Hopkins, Kovalev does not have. So Hopkins can stay either too far away on Kovalev's left side or he can smother Kovalev, come in and throw lead right hands high on Kovalev. Right? Keep in mind, Kovalev's a hooker on the left side of his body. Doesn't have a great straight left. Kovalev, uh, Kopkins can exploit that, that by literally timing an entry point, coming in with lead right hooks, and following up with straight left hands that should be able to find Kovalev naked. I know it sounds ridiculous, but what I want you to do is I want you to look up a user here on YouTube. His name is the Solaris 72. Right? He spells Solaris S O L A R I S. The name of the video is Sergei Kovalev versus Darnell Boone 2. Now let's talk about Darnell Boone. Kovalev has only gone 8 rounds once in his career. That was against Darnell Boone. 
in a fight in which Boone knocked down Kovalev. Right? Kovalev won that fight by split decision. So they had a rematch a bit later. Right? Kovalev's trainer, John David Jackson, is with him in the rematch. Now what I want you to do is to look at the very first minute of the rematch. Understand, Boone comes in the fight educated on Kovalev because it's a rematch. So the things that Boone is trying to do are the things that a fighter would figure out to do after seeing you for a few rounds. Right, so in that first round, Boone comes in with what he believes is going to work against a fighter he's already seen for eight rounds. Right, so the first few seconds here, I'm going to, uh, the first few points I'm going to make, I'm going to refer to the time clock on this video. Right? If you pull up the fight and you're looking at, you know, a different video from a different user, okay, the times won't correspond until the network starts showing the official time on the fight with 2.25 left in the first round. Right? So for the first 35 seconds of the fight, and you'll, I'm just going to tell you what I see, you can track it on the video. I know it sounds wonkish, but these are the things that I believe veteran fighters look at and research, right? These are the trade secrets of boxing. Hopkins is taking this fight for a reason. I believe Hopkins could beat Adonis Stevenson today, right? I believe Hopkins could take on Janady Golovkin at 168, right, and put on a great fight. In fact, I'd probably take Hopkins in that fight the more I look at the films, right? But Hopkins has chosen Kovalev, and if you research how this fight was made, it was Hopkins' people who reached out to Kovalev. So I believe Hopkins has studied Kovalev. Don't fall for the lines almost every fighter uses when they tell you they barely know anything about their opponent even though their opponent is in their division and is a champion right fighters always claim that they never look at film etc I don't buy it I think if you're a serious student of the game then you've got to take lessons you've got to do film study let's do film study here right the fight starts and what you're going to see is right out the gate, one of the first punches Darnell Boone throws is a straight left. Keep in mind, Boone is operating out of an orthodox stance. He's able to throw a straight left to Kovalev's body. He's able to split the uprights. It's like kicking a field goal. Right, Kovalev is standing around like this because he wants to throw punches with both hands, hooks with both hands. He wants to keep his balance even keel. That creates a hole in his defense. Right, so Boone is able to get off to Kovalev's left side and he's able to, from an orthodox stance, bend down and touch Kovalev's body. Right at the 507 mark of the film, right of that, the Solaris 72 video, right, Sergei Kovalev versus Darnell Boone 2. You're going to see that Kovalev, in response to Boone coming in low, throwing lefts to his body, does a Vladimir Klitschko move. He's able to push 5'9 Boone under his left underarm. That's his response. Right? Boone comes in low. 
Understand, you can bend at the waist on Kovalev. Boxing's all about angles. So Boone is over here relative to Kovalev. He comes in, he's throwing lefts to Kovalev's body. Kovalev pushes him under his underarm. Right? At 518, just a few seconds later, Boone is able to land another left to Kovalev's body. We're not talking about one punch off. We're talking about methodically. Every few seconds, Boone is able to land a left to Kovalev's body. At 523, in that Solaris video, Boone is able to land yet another left to Kovalev's body. In other words, if you come in low at an angle too far away for Kovalev to hit you with his straight right hand, right? If you're in the middle where Kovalev can't hit you with a hook, Kovalev, in fact, based on angles, seems hesitant at some angles. You can land that lead straight left hand. So what you're going to see is at the 5.30 mark of the video, Kovalev hints at throwing a right hand, but can't get it off. He's hesitant because Boone, who's fought him before, is low and knows where the right hand would be. So Boone, of course, is too close for Kovalev to throw the kind of low straight right hand that he gets off against Caparello. So Kovalev looks like he's going to throw a right hand, and then he pauses. He's caught halfway because Boone already knows he can only throw it to a certain part of his body. Right? He's not going to come across with a right cross. It's going to be a right hand to Boone's left side. Right? And Boone has a hand up, already has it blocked. Well, let me just point out that Boone then comes back four seconds later, about 534 left in the video, with a high left hook. And Kovalev blocks it. That's all he can do. Kovalev, you'll notice, is too upright to do anything else. In other words, Kovalev can't, you know, parry the shot and come back with something else. If you jump in on him, he's too upright. Now, for those of you watching a video of the Boone rematch, that's not the Solaris video. We're now at the point where there's 225 left in the first round. In other words, everything I've described, Boone landing multiple lefts to Kovalev's body, takes place in the first 35 seconds of the match. So now we have 225 left in the round, right? Boone goes to a corner after Kovalev throws a right after reaching with a left, right? Now it's crazy. You're fighting Sergei Kovalev and you voluntarily go to a corner within the first minute of the fight. That's what Darnell Boone does. Now, Boone's feet aren't right, right? His, his lead foot is inside of Kovalev's foot, right? So he's a little trapped in the corner. What he does next is interesting, right? He is able to duck low. Right? This is the angle. 
Kovalev is up on him. He's able to duck low. He's able to get out of the corner. He's able to lean and grab Kovalev on his side. Right? It's Kovalev's left side. He's able to lean and grab Kovalev and just spin his way out of the corner. He's out of the corner by the 220 mark left in the round. Right? That's the point. Because Kovalev doesn't have long power, he can't hurt you with power from his left side. A guy who knows what he's doing can dive into Kovalev's left side. It's a get out of jail free card. If you're working angles and you're not right in front of Kovalev, if you're not exposed like Southpaw, Blake Caparello was exposed, or like Southpaw, Gabriel Campillo was exposed to Kovalev's straight right hand and right hooks. If you're just focusing on the left side of Sergei Kovalev, you'll find an escape hatch because Kovalev can't hurt you with long power. Right? Kovalev is mid-range on this side. So you can get inside of mid-range on this side. There's no straight left to hurt you. Right? Kovalev throws a straight left, but it's tepid. It's not a heavy punch like his straight right. So Darnell Boone is able to get off the ropes. Here's where it gets interesting. The next 20 seconds are what I believe Bernard Hopkins is hoping to do to Kovalev. Boone, and I know this video is much longer than the first minute of the Boone fight, but that first minute needs to be dissected because it's the key to beating Kovalev. At 2.14, left in the round, all of this is in the first minute. Boone leads with a right hand. Right? He comes over with a looping right hand. Right? And then he's off at the side. He's off at the safe zone on Kovalev. Kovalev's left side. He's off at Kovalev's left side. He leads with the right. So he's leading with something way out here. You understand it. He's leading with something way out here. He leads with the right hand. Kovalev is unprepared defensively. So after throwing that right hand from way out here, he comes back, splits the uprights with a straight left. Right? Hits Kovalev flush. Understand, just seconds later, with 2.01 left in the first round, Boone successfully pulls off the same combination again. What I want people to do is I want people to count the straight left hands that Darnell Boone lands in the first minute of his rematch against Sergei Kovalev. Also, look at Kovalev. Right? Other than tucking Boone's head under his shoulder, and if an opponent knows that's the response, if he pressures Kovalev on the left side, he might be able to avoid that. Right? Hopkins is taller than Boone. But other than tucking Boone's head under his shoulder, what's Kovalev's strategy? When a guy comes over and is leading with right hands from way out here and coming back and splitting the uprights with a straight left. Why is Boone so successful splitting the uprights? Now keep in mind, Boone makes a mistake at times in the fight. You'll notice Boone at times is actually moving toward Kovalev's right hand. 
What if Boone were to just move toward Kovalev's left hand? Right? Is Kovalev prepared defensively on his left side? I'd say no. Right? Couple that with the fact that Hopkins smothered Felix Trinidad. I want people to look at the last half of the Trinidad fight. Understand Hopkins beat another guy, Oscar De La Hoya, by carefully staying away from De La Hoya's hard left hand. Hopkins is a guy who knows to pick sides. Hopkins is a guy who knows how to hit you and then smother you. Or smother you and then hit you. Right? Here on YouTube, you can stop and quickly back up and re-watch certain parts of videos. You're going to notice Darnell Boone's straight left lands flush both to Kovalev's body, his solar plexus, and to Kovalev's face, right? Straight left from a fighter off at the side. In other words, let's say Hopkins were right in front of Kovalev, right? He'd be a fool. But let's say Hopkins is right here on Kovalev. Understand, Kovalev won't be able to reach him with the right unless Kovalev turns a little bit to throw that straight right. Then Hopkins could move again. Right? The problem is, while Kovalev is turning to keep up, Bernard can come in with a right hand, then split the uprights with a straight left, then smother Kovalev and have his head up where Kovalev can't tuck him under his underarm. In fact, when I made the first video, I thought, you know what, Hopkins is going to have to pick his poison, right? You know, try to clinch and stuff like that. But when you're fighting a fighter who you could hit with flush straight lefts, who you could neutralize his power by coming in on his left side repeatedly, and boxing's an angle game. Why would Hopkins even want to be the guy to clinch Kovalev? Wouldn't Hopkins, in fact, want to smother Kovalev without clinching him? There are moments in the Trinidad fight where Hopkins avoids clinches. In other words, this is that rare fight where the guy who's almost 50 might not be the guy who wants to clinch in the fight. Because if he jumps in and Kovalev, as in the Darnell Boone fight, and Kovalev wins by knockout in the second round, just don't forget the fight that takes place before that. Kovalev is too upright, and to me, right? might not even have the opportunity to use an arm bar as I was talking about earlier to avoid Hopkins clinches because Hopkins might actually be the one forcing his opponent to box. So just look at if I've confused you just look at the first minute of the Darnell Boone Sergei Kovalev rematch. Count the left hands that Boone lands, the straight left hands. Just count them. Folks, in 60 seconds, a guy should not be able to hit you with three or four or more straight left hands. Also, in a rematch where you've seen the guy for eight rounds, shouldn't you be more prepared for Darnell Boone than Sergei Kovalev is in the first minute of this round. Let's also look at the rest of Kovalev's career. Just understand, 
Cedric Agnew made it into the seventh round against Kovalev. The seventh, right? Kovalev has never gone by the eighth round. Wow, you're telling me a guy with a hole in his defense. Hansen fought the last third of a 12-round fight. Right, Bernard Hopkins, you know, the hesitancy with Hopkins, if Hopkins is in his prime, I'd take Hopkins in a heartbeat. The hesitancy with Hopkins is simply, Hopkins is not in his prime. The Darnell Boone strategy actually requires that Bernard move quite a bit in the fight. Quite a bit. Right? But wow. If you're landing flush on Kovalev, like Darnell Boone was landing flush on Kovalev, right? If that lead right hand has Kovalev that befuddled, if you're coming inside and Kovalev is too upright, that might energize even a senior citizen. So right now, as I said, I'm going to back away from my earlier video. Right? My video usually has a lot of critics. This is one of those times where I'm criticizing my first thoughts video. The film study has changed my mind completely. Right? I think based on the odds I'm seeing, right, and Kovalev at um, at least some casinos on odds checker yesterday was about a two to one favorite. I like the over in the fight. Hedged with Hopkins to win the fight. In other words, the outcome that has happened most of the time in Kovalev fights. Kovalev by early KO. Didn't need KO Caparello in two rounds. Didn't need KO Ishmael Shalak in two rounds. Didn't need KO Nathan Cleverly in four rounds. Right? That's the outcome I'm taking off the table. But understand the risk involved. If Kovalev does what he's done in countless fights, you lose it all. Right? I just think Kovalev is too naked too. A straight left that splits the uprights from a fighter standing off to Kovalev's left. And from a looping lead right hand. Let me point out too. Much of what I'm talking about Hopkins doing to win the fight is the same strategy Hopkins used to beat Kovalev's trainer, John David Jackson. Now, I've posted the um, Solaris video and the video of Hopkins against Jackson, who was a southpaw, unlike Kovalev, on my YouTube channel page, so you can take a look at the videos. Just understand that Hopkins is a master at picking a side on a guy, right? Kovalev's two-handed, but much of the power is hooks, right? Hopkins is great at picking a side on a guy and then going to work. He'll have that opportunity here because Darnell Boone picked a side in the first minute of his fight against Kovalev in the rematch and had success landed way too many flush punches. In sum, this fight's much more competitive than I thought it was. Hopkins has a real chance here. I'm going to eat crow by backing away from an earlier video I made before looking at film. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.